Next up on the Hooks in MMA podcast, we have Kyle Killshot Prepolik from Windsor, Ontario. How's it going today, Kyle? Going good, man. How are you? Not too bad, thanks. Uh, so, some things going on. We had, uh, you know, your last fight against Austin Hubbard, um, and then kind of COVID hit, and uh, obviously nobody's really fought um, since, unless you're on a UFC card. Uh, what's been going on with you, and, you know, how have you been keeping busy during this time? Uh, I've just been staying busy doing, uh, you know, at-home renos and uh, just training day in, day out, just trying to keep the body moving, stay nice and light just in case anything comes up, that kind of thing, you know, and, uh, you know, just spending more time with uh, my family and dog and all that stuff. So that helps out a bit. Yeah. And you're at uh, Maximum Training Center? Yep. Maximum Training Center in Windsor. Yep. And so I guess just quickly, how did that, uh, you know, things have opened up quite a bit in the last little, little bit here, but um, was there some, was it completely shut down or were you doing like individual stuff? Or are you with working with a kind of a partner or a couple of like small groups or? Um, it varied at first. It was kind of like, you know, we don't know what we're getting ourselves into. Let's, let's chill. Uh, we'll just do our own thing. And then as things slowly started going into like phases, um, that's when we're like, all right, let's get together. Let's do some pad work. Let's, uh, you know, let's do this, do that, you know, and, uh, just keep the body moving other than that, or even like little group runs and stuff like that. And, you know, I just, anything helps just to keep yeah. the body moving, being outside instead of being inside and depressed. It's, uh, it's, you gotta, you gotta go out and do stuff, you know? Yeah. No kidding. You gotta keep the mind moving too, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but Paul Rousseau, he's been your trainer for a while or? Uh, yeah, multiple trainers. Like I got Reno Del Castro, who's the main head coach. And then, you know, Paul Russo is the other coach as well. So got those two guys for sure. Okay. And recently, uh, like Maximum is, is up and running now or? Uh, no, we are waiting for either basically news on it when it can open or like whatever rules or things we got to follow just to make sure we can even have, you know, small groups or whatever whatever works best basically yeah. but uh there's literally no word on like anything i'm hoping by next week we can start having like little small classes and all that stuff because you know be being by yourself or even just one or two people like it, it works it gets the job done but it's just uh the environment of everything and you know just being around more people it, it just livens things up a bit you know yeah, like I'm, I'm not a fighter, but I know probably individually you can do so many things and it's, it keeps your body moving like you were saying and you can keep sharp. But um, in terms of getting the, like the blood flowing and, and the, you know, the, the competition piece in, in practice, I'm sure, going back and forth against you know, people that are um, you know, on the same level as you, that, that really gets you going. So I guess that leads into my next question. Who, who do you kind of roll with at your gym uh, before COVID? Who, who's somebody that, you know, um, is on your level, I guess. Well, there's, there's various levels to like everyone, everyone's got some like trick or, you know, their go-to thing where they're really like a good expertise at, like, we, we have a few guys that are like really good. Like we got John Roger and, uh, you know, Rob Lewis, you know, Paul Russo. Um, uh, there's other guys there just caught me on the spot. I'm sure. trying to think of them real quick. <laughs> no, it's all good. But, uh, you know, just every, everyone has their strengths and their weaknesses and it, being able to like go with all of these people can really refine and like, you know, shape you into, you know, being adaptable to, you know, some guy who's good at this thing or some guy who's good at that, you know? So uh, everyone has their own little like quirk. And uh, that's why I, I feel like it's important, you know, once this thing gets back, you know, I hope we can, you know, get back to rolling as soon as possible because rolling with, you know, high level guys who compete and, you know, even just cr being able to cross train with other guys who are high level competitors and, you know, the, those things really matter. And those are the little things that'll just add up and just make the difference, you know? Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, so I guess you wrestled in high school. I just wondered what, what uh, piqued that interest and, in, you know, how did it evolve into being a, a full mixed martial artist? Um. Well, I wrestled in high school just because I couldn't box when I was in high school. I had to, you know, go do a bunch of things first. Like, I had to get a job, you know, get my license, do all those things like as a teenager should. Yeah. And uh, they didn't really want me boxing like my parents, that is, at first. And then I was like, well, I'll join a high school sport and I'll do wrestling. And, you know, 
watching like George St. Pierre or like Matt Hughes back in the day and guys like that, I was like, all right, like th this is, this is what I want to evolve to. This is where I want to be. You know, this, this is what I got to do to get there. Awesome. Um, so you held the BTC and the TXC belts. That was before, I guess, you got the call on one week's notice. Uh, just, you know, wondering your experiences with those two uh, promotions. Uh, BTC, like, I have never had, like, any issue. They, you know, they treat everybody well. And uh, I think it's, you know, pretty well organized. Like, a lot of leagues in Canada right now are, uh, you know, they really attend to, like, the fighter's and you know they're everyone's respectable everybody's nice you know it, it's a team thing right like they need us we need them and you know we all work hand in hand um txc uh from what i remember you know everyone was really same like same thing like you know they, they've all been a part of the game they all know what they got to do and uh you know everyone's it's it is business but at the same time like you know what they're they're cool with you you're cool with them and uh you know, if, if things go well, like we, I do my job and they do their job, it, it, it should run smooth just like anywhere else, right? Yeah, and you're right. And uh, those type of promotions that are, you know, one of the top four, like one Bellator, PFL, or UFC, like the, those ones do rely on guys like you and when you're in that position and just making sure that the promotions run well. Um, I guess the big thing is uh, I've heard, you know, horror stories of certain promotions, you know, even across Canada, unfortunately, that, you know, haven't paid their fighters on time. It took a few weeks or, you know, very unprofessional guys that I'm not going to name any names that, you know, <laughs> pull out last minute. And it's kind of a common thing that they seem to do. Like, um, that's good that you had good experiences with those, I guess is my point. Yeah. No, so, so far, so good, right? So yeah. far, so good. Yeah. And there's always room in the future. And yeah. Who knows? You never know what the future holds. Knock on, knock on wood that that doesn't happen. Um, I was just wondering what the uh, the call on one week's notice was like for you for the the uh, fight against fellow Canadian Nordin Taleb. Uh, just you know, how'd you get the call? And you know, not a lot of time to specifically prepare for that type of guy. So just that whole experience. Uh, let's see that experience getting that week call. Like, well, first, uh, I saw a thing on Twitter, and I saw my uh, buddy Jesse Ronson, who's actually competing, I'm pretty sure, this weekend. Yeah, Saturday. Uh, yeah, so good luck to him, and I know he'll do fantastic. Um, I saw him actually tweet out to Nordine saying, hey, you know, if, uh, I'll fight you if you need a replacement, whatever. And I was like, well, damn, I'll shoot my shot, too. So I, I did what I said on uh, Twitter, just being like, hey, you know, with all respect, you know, I'm down to fight you if you're uh, willing to give me the shot. And uh, then I told my coach and manager, obviously, and uh, about, you know, like I, I would, if I get the call, I'm down to fight Nordine. I, I think I can win just, just on various styles and pressure, being a pressure fighter and, you know, always uh, able to counter off anything and be in the pocket, do, do all kinds of things, just yeah. mix it up where I can. Um, and he's like, yeah, let's see what we can do. And, uh, a couple days went by and then you know they're like oh congrats like uh you're in it you fight next week and I'm like what the hell no way and I was just like that is insane like just like that hey okay so I was it was it was surreal like it was and I thought you fought fantastically like I when I watched that fight I've watched a few of you before like I think you know my buddy Josh Hill I was a, at a bunch, yeah. of, bunch of his fights uh you know, locally in, in Burlington and Hamilton and all that. I've seen you fight a few times, but I thought that performance against Nordine on one week's notice was fantastic. That was a great fight. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, I was just like, you know what, I got to move forward. I got to try to get him to make a mistake, ruin his game plan, and just, you know, catch him over the top or just just anything just to, you know, keep scoring points, eventually try and get that TKO or knockout. Like, if, if, if that was my goal anyway, was to yeah. try to just finish, right, just to – showcase what I can do on even a week's notice and uh yeah it is what it is now so yeah I guess the the frustrating thing for me is and what I wanted to ask well it's probably more frustrating for you but I wanted to ask like you got that on one week's notice but then you only had one fight after with them was it like preset that it was going to be the two fights how does that work like um well I thought I was at least going to get three because like it doesn't I feel like it doesn't really matter because it's like their contract says like when I got it, it was a four fight deal. But, uh, you know, after 
certain things, whether it's regarding like health or your performances, if they're lackluster or just whatever, they can just cut you at any time, right? Just being like, hey, you know, like, sorry to let you go, yada, yada, yada. These are the reasons we're letting you go. And, uh, you know, if you do well in the future, uh, you're welcome back anytime kind of thing. So it just varies. Okay. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it's kind of doing them a favor with, with the one week's notice thing, and then you only had one fight after. I, I was kind of pissed off about that, but it is what it is, I, especially with the, the Hubbard fight. I mean, like, what did you, how did you feel during that fight? I, I thought it went um, good as well, but. During that fight, even, uh, like, I know it's out there now, um, but I had, like, this little leg issue, or leg issue, like, health issue, where my body will go into uh, rhabdo or rhabdomyolysis, which the targeted area for me is in my legs. And uh, so when I had uh, Reno, Chris Hordesky, uh, and Shane in the back, you know, I had to tell them, hey, my legs are having an episode. I, I need to stop warming up. And then uh, right away I put on my compression socks and uh, just left my legs elevated, wait for my time to go out, got my heart rate going a little bit. Just And then I was just like, all right, I'm going to go for broke, try and knock this guy out. Cause I know he's going to try and stand and engage for the first little bit. And then, uh, which I, I was actually surprised that he st stood there that whole first round with me. But, uh, after that, obviously he listened and adapted and, you know, he did what he had to do to win, getting the takedowns and, you know, uh, not really too exciting in the second and third round, but it was, it was pretty fun in the first round that I was able to at least strike and do a little bit before, uh, my legs went kaput. So, <laughs> yeah. That's unfortunate too. Um, I guess, you know, moving more in a positive direction, hopefully is, uh, have you heard anything on, you know, things are opening up, some smaller promotions are opening up. Have you gotten any calls or is there anything on the horizon for you? Cause I know a lot of us want to watch, watch you get back to that winning circle. Um, I haven't gotten any phone calls of anything yet. Um, I'm basically just, uh, staying ready, staying healthy uh making sure whatever happens with my legs is taken care of and uh you know i really feel like it had something to do with potentially my diet because i always change up diet when i come into like a fight camp whether yeah. it's low carb high protein high fat whatever energy source i need to take um or holding myself at a lower weight uh just to make the cut easier which is good and bad but uh you know once i feel you know I, as of right now like the way i've been you know training and you know staying with my diet but still enjoying a little bit of life you know having a pizza here and there and <laughs> whatnot so uh i feel you know once everything's ready and ready to go uh everything will be fine and i'll take every precaution that i gotta take and you know be ready to throw down and be healthy and uh if i'm healthy it's uh game over for a lot of people and if they want to be in that kind of fight with me then uh it is what it is you know yeah well health is first so get that that uh you know in line and then we're, we're looking forward to that next fight hopefully it's soon um yeah so we, we finish off with a between round segment so i'm gonna ask you a question you just pick uh one of two or three answers and we just kind of speed round it perfect i'll do my best <laughs> all right uh steak or seafood type of guy Ooh, can i say both sure <laughs> I, I say both too um music or sports Ooh, sports. Uh, Windsor, Toronto, or Hamilton as a city? I got to go with my city of Windsor. Windsor. Fighting or training? Ooh, that's tough. I got to go with fighting. Re rear naked choke or armbar? Armbar. Uh, are you a beach or on a boat type of guy? Both. Nice. Uh, grappling or striking? Striking. Knockout or submission? Knockout. Uh, who wins in their prime, GSP or Anderson Silva? I think George St. Pierre. Uh, what about GSP and Khabib? I still think George St. Pierre. I agree. Um, in a rematch, Nordin Taleb or Kyle Prepolik? Uh With a full camp and being healthy, I, I think myself for sure. Austin Hubbard or Kyle Prepolik? Oh, I got to go with me. <laughs> and anybody else in, I'm assuming, the lightweight division for you? If I'm healthy, I, I'll take on anybody. I agree. Uh, any sponsors or shout-outs to finish off? Uh, honestly, all the few sponsors. Uh, 
I can list them all. Hopefully, uh, so I got Unifor, I got IBEW, uh, Layuna, uh, Penalty Box Windsor, best place to be, Chicken Delights, um, <laughs> Takedown Distribution, um, Guard Kimonos, uh, you get those at Takedown as well, um, Freestyle. Uh, who else is there? Don't miss mm -hmm. anyone. I know I'm not. I'm trying not to. Uh, enter check. Uh, all my, you know, friends, family, and ongoing supporters. Uh, Motor City Credit Union. Um, obviously, Maximum Training Center. Um, the Tecumseh Jiu Jitsu guys that helped me uh, train as well, and uh, Michigan Top Team, the other uh, gym I cross train at as well. And I gotta thank them too. That's a pretty damn good list. Uh, <laughs> just to finish off, um, this is Kyle Prepolik and. We can't wait for you to get back in the winning circle. We need, we need you to get a fight. We need you to be healthy. And I know based on your, uh, your Instagram and, and uh, Facebook posts that you're hungry and it's going to be a nightmare for anybody to face you. So we wish you luck for that. Uh, this is Hooks in MMA. Thanks. Thank you. Next up on the Hooks In MMA podcast, we're lucky to have a, an undefeated amateur uh, making his pro debut uh, coming up with BTC um, Power in, in St. Catharines. Looking forward to that. Liam Gallagher, how's it going today, man? Good, man. Good. Thanks for having me. No problem. We appreciate it. And, uh, you know, excited for uh, this upcoming card. I was uh, lucky enough to attend the last card in Burlington. Uh, obviously, you know, a great show, four fights, four finishes, four rear naked chokes, and, uh, you know, back on the map in terms of live fans. And um, how exciting is that going to be uh, for you making your pro debut kind of coming up here? Yeah, that's one thing you can always count on with BTC. They're always putting on good shows, exciting cards. Uh, I'm honored to fight for them. I can't wait to make my pro debut. It's been a long time coming. It's been something I've been working towards. So it's nice to kind of see it all pan out now and get my pro career started yeah so uh what goes into the thought process some people you know maybe they have a kickboxing background they have a bunch of fights then they go probe with no amateur mma fights some of them you know may have 10 amateur fights uh, what's uh the reasoning for now is it you know your age is it you're ready what what goes into that decision uh, it's actually a little bit of all those things i had seven amateur kickboxing fights then i had five amateur mma fights Ideally, I would have liked to have one more amateur MMA fight just because, like, the time off that I've had. Like, I've been out of the cage now for about 15 months. So I would have liked to have had one more, but I had two scheduled. I had one in July, fell through. I had one in September, fell through. So there's no more waiting. It was felt like the right time. My coaches felt like I was ready. So make the jump. Yeah, exactly. Um, just based on some of the you know, the fights that I've seen um, from you, I definitely believe you're ready. And, uh, you know, great opportunity coming up here. Just wanted to ask, you know, for uh, the fans out there, which, uh, which um, training facility are you at and who are your coaches in for the upcoming fight? I'm at, a, I fight at a Vision Quest MMA. And my head coaches are Josh Hill and Scott McCovey. And uh, I also train at Agus MMA with Lyndon Whitlock and uh, Luke Chasson. So those are also some of my coaches and one of the rooms that I'm in quite frequently. Yeah, so we've got some legit guys in uh, your corner oh, there, yeah. which is fantastic. It's good to see uh, Lyndon and, and Chaston get their, their gym up and running after the last couple of years here. And then, obviously, uh, Josh, we, we know much about him and uh, big fight for him on December 3rd. So excited for that as well. Yeah, that's a big one. I'm excited too. Yeah. Um, so training been going well um obviously you got uh you know a guy that you fought in the amateur scene um supposedly supposed to be your your next fight here uh yeah. um obviously on social media you 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 know called him out uh he's ghosting a little bit uh not not uh, responding to uh the promoters and and others uh just you know speak to what you think's going on with this guy and if you think he's gonna uh. be the guy you're stepping against uh in a couple weeks Honestly, man, I'm not too sure. This is definitely a first for me. Uh, I don't know, like, to just be ghosted like that's a little unorthodox. Uh, I don't know if it's mental, if it's physical, what's going on on his end. It's like, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go. My only real issue and beef with it is if you're going to pull out and you don't have the intentions of fighting, then make it known. Like, fuck, vacant injuries. <laughs> Do something, something other than lead me along because a lot goes into every camp financially 
hard like work wise like there's a lot that people don't see and a lot that people don't realize like i don't i don't get a win if he doesn't show up i don't get i don't get paid if i don't get in there and fight so there's a there's a loss of more than just that one end of like losing the fight or like or not having the fight i mean absolutely and it's like um like you said uh but you know professionalism's number one like if he's it's his first professional fight as well right and it's for the progression of the sport to get to like that point and then to get cold feet at like again like i said at least make it known like if you're having if it's mental if it's physical regardless like i just think it's very unprofessional just to shun everybody and lead the promotion along who's obviously doing him favors to lead me along who i've another athlete i've been training and again me and Kelvin like had a good like rapport like after our last fight I had like no problems with them it's just this is a little unorthodox I didn't see this one coming exactly and the least you can do is at least answer back because as you said you need to know if you're fighting you're preparing That's like it. you are but it's uh it's getting close here so it's it, you know you're doing what you need to do and that's all that matters in the end but uh there's got to be some kind of a you know a reassurance from his end um oh, exactly yeah, so anyways, we're looking forward for you to get in the cage, whether it's against him or a replacement uh, opponent for your, your first professional debut. Um, you know, what do you foresee in the next, you know, year here? Do you do you set your goals, like, just fight by fight, or is it, uh, you know, essentially like a lot shorter to mid to long-term goal? What's What do you foresee yourself wanting to do? Uh, like, obviously, you have to take it fight by fight, but I'd be like, but I'd be lying if I was saying that I don't like, like, this is what I want to do as a career. Like, this is like, I want to fight as a professional fighter. I want to make a living out of it. And I definitely like am seeing in the future, but you got to take it one at a time. I got to get yeah. this one out of the way. And obviously I'd like to fight it as soon as I can in the new year and just no injuries, just keep rolling them out. Like that's kind of my style. That's how I fought in kickboxing. I fought one after the other MMA too. All my five MMA fights I had in like under a two year span. Yeah. Like I, I, I like the activity and I find that I thrive when I'm active. So that's like kind of, kind of the goal, get the ball rolling in November and then just keep going from there. Yeah. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, just for anybody who hasn't seen you fight, uh, you know, fighting style. Um, yeah. If you can expand on that. Uh, I'd say like I my definitely my strong suits are my kickboxing. Like I'm a I'm a striker. That's that's where I I enjoy the fight. I I like standing in the pocket. I like the idea of standing there and banging. I feel like I'm pretty well rounded everywhere, and I've been tested and like I've been taken down in fights, and I've proven that I can wrestle. I've proven that I have like takedown defense, submission defense, submission offense. I have wrestling offense. Oh, well, I don't know, uh, but. Yeah, I'm definitely, like, if you were to ask someone, I'm definitely known as a striker. Yeah, yeah, I assumed you you were going to say that, but wanted to hear it anyways. Um, yeah. Yeah, so just, uh, you know, um, moving forward here, we do uh, a, a little segment called um, Between Rounds. So I'm going to ask you a question, and you, you give me your best answer. It's just a quick uh, one-minute rapid fire, okay? Yep, no problem. All right. Um, what's your uh, favorite cheat meal after a fight? Ooh, chicken wings and beer. <laughs> uh, favorite uh, type of, or sorry, favorite sport other than MMA? I'd have to say hockey. Do you have a favorite team? Yeah, Leafs. Uh, oh, man. Sorry to hear <laughs> No, um, I can't say anything. My Habs are off to a horrible oh, start this year. <laughs> uh, horrible start. Um, uh, what's like a favorite movie or TV series uh, currently? Currently, I've actually been watching a show on Netflix called Blind Spot, but. Uh... I'm a big movie guy. I'd probably say probably one of my all-time favorites is either Wedding Crashers or uh, Happy Gilmore. Probably my those are my top two. Can't can't go wrong with either of those. Uh, favorite place to travel to in Canada? In Canada, I've actually been quite a bit. I'd have to say Vancouver, BC. Yeah, and what about outside of Canada? Uh, recently, it's been California. Going out to Team Alpha Male. That's been that's been the spot as of recent for training purposes. But coolest guy you've met out there. Ah, uh, honestly, that whole room is full of talent. It's pretty surreal just being around, like, Faber, Cody Garbrandt, Clay Guida, Chad Mendez. Like, the list goes on of, like, guys that are in that room on a daily basis. So, I remember the first time I went out there, I was pretty starstruck, but like, trying to hold it together. Yeah, amazing. And uh, just a favorite couple of uh, mixed martial artists of all time. 
Uh, my favorite fighters, number one, Josh Hill. That's definitely <laughs> someone I look to emulate day in, day out. Uh, big. I'm a Cody fan, Cody Garbrandt, Frankie Edgar. I've taken a liking to Peter Yan. Um, some of the bigger guys, Israel Adesanya. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, like uh, Chad Mendez, he's another one I really like watching Chad fight when he was in the UFC. There's so to see him guys. in bare knuckle too. Yeah, that's gonna be another guy, Mike Perry. He was another yeah, one there of my we go. There that we just go. signed with bare knuckle. It's another guy I like to watch. So awesome. Um, yeah, just any sponsors, shout outs, or social media. Uh, social media Gallagher 97 and Facebook Liam Gallagher sponsors Local 67 in Hamilton, Ontario. It's uh pipe fitters plumbers and welders and vision quest mma can't do it without them and uh you're making me feel really old with the the 97 tagline in there it feels like yeah. yesterday yesterday i was 24 but uh you know very excited for your, your upcoming pro debut um it's going to be uh you know with uh, btc um power in st Catharines, and i don't care who's across the cage uh you, you will get your hand raised so good luck to you sir uh thank you so much liam gallagher this is hooks in mma Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, and good luck.